And as a central scenario, this is, this is reasonable. Uh, of course, there are risks uh, that are well known, particularly the geopolitical risks we're seeing from an escalation of the Middle East conflict, which will have important repercussions through oil prices and commodity prices on inflation and central bank policy. But barring the materialization of that risk, I think that the base case is for central banks to be cutting rates and this to happen in a, in a reasonable manner so that the economy continues to be, to be landing on a soft spot, on, on, a, on, on a safe spot. Jose, you, you're talking about some of the risks to the upside and, and, and that, that's been graphically made in terms of just the increase in transportation costs and what that could mean for goods coming into Europe. I want to ask you about China. It's a speciality of Standard Chartered as well. But there is a school of thought that China is failing to invigorate domestically as much as it would like. So hence, it's going to revisit its export model, blow the dust off that model and export aggressively to the West and, uh, and revisit the story that was a, a case for most of this century. That is that, that China is exporting not necessarily goods, but deflation as well. Do you think that's a plausible scenario where actually an increase of Chinese goods at a discounted rate flooding onto global markets? Well, I think that China is playing a very important role in the export market now in the new economy. Yeah. It's a big change in the exporting model of China, which was exporting uh, cheap manufacturing goods, T-shirts. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, electric vehicles, uh, batteries, uh, solar, wind where the Chinese have become world leaders. So I think that this is something which is important for the world because that enhances consumer satisfaction in the rest of the world and productivity and help us in the sustainability cost. So China needs the world. China needs to export and the world needs China. The problem is with those high-end goods, no one minded getting their cheap T-shirts coming in from China. There wasn't really going to be a trade war on the basis of it. But when it comes to high-end goods, there are goods that... European and US manufacturers want to make domestically as well. There then potentially becomes trade concerns and potentially uh, issues around tariffs and trade wars. Yeah, are we for globalization or aren't we for globalization? If we are still for uh, competition, which I think is extremely important at the global level, I think what you have to ask yourself is how come that the Chinese have been able to succeed there and what is it that we need to do? In the United States, you have the IRA which is trying to push uh, on, the, you know, on the side of investment in infrastructures and sustainable infrastructures and so on to make the economy also more productive. In the European Union, you also have voices which are saying, well, we need more support. It may be right that there is more support to these initiatives because they are the key to productivity. But I think that try to compete, not protect. I think that the last thing we want is to block uh, you know, whatever is left of the global trade system through further protect right. protectionist measures. Jose, I want to ask you how much time you're going to be spending on M&A this year. I mean, last year it cropped up a little bit. First Abu Dhabi Bank circling, did some due diligence, walked away. Do you expect that your bank is still prey in 2024? Well, let me tell you, we, I didn't spend a single minute on the first Abu Dhabi Bank uh, last year other than answering questions from journalists because we never spoke to them. And we're very focused... Not, not one phone call, not one conversation? No, no, I didn't. I didn't have one conversation, I can tell you that. Not even a one phone call. So, just to be on the record. And this year, I expect not to be spending any uh, single minute on that, but rather be fully focused with the rest of our team in executing our strategy, which I think is working very well and uh, which is creating a, a lot of value. So we are there to create that value for ourselves and we don't need to be distracted with other things. So we continue our course and we're very pleased about what we've been doing and what we will be doing this year.